Bayou Time Sports is brought to you by Terrible General Health Systems Community Sports Institute in conjunction with Barker Honda. Mike Detail along with Mark Roman at the Pro Football Camp. Mark, how many years you've been here at Pro Football Camp? I know it's quite a few. Oh, shoot. I can't even remember that question. I'm getting up there. Uh, I was at the, the I was at the uh, I was there at the, the first camp and uh, I missed a couple years in between because I was obviously living in California and it was tough for me to get here. But uh, anytime I can come back uh, and, and volunteer and, and give my time, I think it's valuable for the kids because when I was in high school, um, it was a guy that played Corey Raymond, who's an LSU guy, uh, now he's coaching at University of Florida, who came home and I've always dreamed about going to the NFL. And so he made that dream tangible for me. It was like something that I could reach out and touch. And so I feel like it's, it's paramount. If I can be here, I'm here. All right, you, Corey, y'all were the starters of DBU, right? Yeah, y'all started DBU, right? Okay, uh, so it's, it's crazy. Um, I'm a little older than Corey, uh, and so I would like to think that I had a hand in starting DBU. Those guys, when they took it over, like, they took it to a different level. Like, um, all those guys who came there, they made, they made me proud to – on the LSU uniform because when they, when them guys would be out there performing and and hearing the announcers and the analysts talk about how good the DBs were at LSU and shoot they still running them out there and so like it's it's just been a joy for me and just knowing that I had some kind of hand in that because I wasn't there for the the heydays when it was winning championships but I like to think that I'm definitely responsible for bringing a lot of guys like Corey in because when I was leaving LSU Corey was coming in Travis and. Randall Gay, a lot of those guys was coming in. So I like to think I had a hand in starting it. Yeah, you had a big hand in starting <laughs> it. One of the things, too, is today how the game has changed so much where camps like the pro football camp, seven on seven, has gotten the wide receiver, pitch and catch part of the game, but also the coverage part of the game. It's taken it to another level. Yes. Um, these kind of camps are really invaluable. Um, to the high school athlete. Um, I never participated in the camp in high school. Um, I was strictly, if I did basketball, I was doing basketball, track, track, football, football. I just didn't have, number one, I didn't have the understanding of what kind of camps were out there. I don't even know if they were, you know, at the time. But uh, I never did a camp. But if I had done a camp, I know that me personally would have benefited a lot because, because of what my dream was, which was going to the NFL. No coach that I ever encountered told me anything that I took bad. If they said run extra, if they said lift extra weights, whatever they said, I did. And so to come to a camp like this, if I had the opportunity, I know it would have just made my drive even that much more vigorous because I would have been at it like, like I got coached by an NFL guy, I got coached by a college coach or a college player. Like I would, that information would have been invaluable to me. You see now how things have sort of changed also from a recruiting standpoint. Okay, seven on seven, that was a California, maybe a Texas deal. Now in the deep south, everybody's got seven on seven in camps like this. And I think it's given the technical part of the game a big lift to play a position. It's just not about, okay, I'm big, I'm fast, I'm strong. Okay, that's great to be, but also there's a certain part of this game of learning the integral parts of how to play your position that's unique in, when you do football. I agree. Uh, seven on seven has uh, heightened the football IQ of a lot of these young high school athletes and, and even college athletes. Like guys are going in to college, they know what the route tree is. They know how to stem, they know how to cover, they know how to use the right technique of their DBs, they know how to read coverages, they know how to play coverages. And so that's all credit to seven on seven. Um, it used to be like a, something that was kind of like ah, taboo, but now it's like it's become like the new AAU basketball for, you know, high school athletes. It seems like if you're not doing seven on seven, that you're falling behind. And so, yeah, it's a it's it's a huge deal, and 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 I think it's going to continue to grow, and and maybe at some point in the future, it might even be a professional seven on seven league. <laughs> It'll be once it's on TV, 
then you know it has made the big time. And I think we're real close to that right now. Um, maybe a memory or two from playing at LSU. Oh, man, I have a lot of memories. But uh, probably the two that, that jump out um, was probably my first uh, game at starting at LSU, uh, which was probably like the second game of the season we played Auburn. And it was a nationally televised game. Uh, and it was the uh, the fire game. It was when the, one of the buildings behind the stadium Auburn. caught fire. Yeah, at Auburn. And uh, I'll always remember that one because I kind of got dinged in that game and I wouldn't come out the game at all. Like, I, I just kind of kept it to myself. <laughs> Obviously, just for the concussion protocols and everything, but I kind of kept it to myself and still, you know, graded out pretty well. And so that that that's a good memory that I have. Um, and then when we beat Florida, when they was number one, when they came in Death Valley, um, the beach that, spur, you know. Oh man, that was that was that was like as a freshman, you know, Danny Werfel and all those guys that they had there who set records, um, they beat us like sixty three to three my freshman year. And I was like, Man, we need to get better. <laughs> and so <laughs> to you know, to have that opportunity to to catch them and and beat them and, and we beat them pretty convincingly. And I don't think nobody in the nation gave us a chance to win that game. And so you know, after the game, when the fans rushed the field and it was pandemonium everywhere, the students carried the goalposts out to Tigerland. Like, I'll never forget that. Thanks so much uh, for joining us uh, this morning. Also, to thank you for coming here. You don't have to do this, but we appreciate you showing up each and every year. Uh, thank you, man. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be here, grateful to even have a platform where I have an opportunity to touch someone's and maybe to touch someone's mind and, and their heart and, and help them along in their journey to whatever their dream is with the game of football. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Mark. Thank you.